Hi everyone, welcome back to another week on the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. This week we are working on this piece right here that is behind me. Uh, this is actually a custom order and it's a jewelry armoire and I got a request, uh, the picture she sent me were in black and I kind of softened it up using a blend and then I'm going to show you how to apply a transfer over a complex surface like the front of this piece here. Uh, it also wraps onto the sides and then we're going to do some special molds up on the top. It ends up being a really, really pretty piece with a really soft feminine look, but also having these dark, powerful colors to it. We're going to talk about transfers going over dark colors. So I think it's going to be a really good video. I love how this piece came together. I love the combination she picked. Um, usually I go through a process when I take a custom order where I show them different options. They show me some things they like. So it's kind of an exchange. It's like an interview process to figure out what finishes we're going to use on the piece. And I always hope that they come together and I read it correctly. But um, I think this one's beautiful and I think you guys are going to love it. Let's get started. Here's where I started on this jewelry armoire. These are pretty common. We see these all the time. I started off by giving this one a really good cleaning and removing all of that tiny hardware. The next thing I did was go ahead and give this a thorough scuff sanding, and that's to take down the shiny finish and give some bite over the top of this. I used a 120 grit paper on my surf prep sander and just went over the entire surface. You can see how that took away some of the sheen of this piece. All my hardware is removed. I did go ahead and leave the doors on to get my blended paint finish over the top. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove those after I get my paint finish on. I'm using Wiesel paint in the chalk synthesis formula and because I gave it that scuff sanding to give some bite to the surface, I don't feel like I need to prime this piece at all. The two colors I'm using are black and smoky quartz and I start out by outlining around the edges in the black and then I'm going to add that smoky quartz into the center and work those two together. On my first coat I don't spend as much time on the blends but I'm really going to perfect those on my second coat. I did two coats exactly the same. While working on this piece, I did discover there was a weakness in one of the legs, so I went ahead and added some glue and left that clamped overnight. With my paint finish complete, we're going to go ahead and add this transfer. I'm adding my transfer over raw and unsealed paint, and I start out by dry fitting my transfer. So I laid it out over the surface of the piece to find my overall placement, and then I'm going to go ahead and pull this bottom drawer out and lay out my transfer on just that bottom drawer. This transfer application is going to take me quite a bit of time, and I'm going to work on it just one piece at a time. I'm going to end up cutting this transfer up into several smaller pieces. I'm going to center my transfer onto the drawers, and I started out with the bottom drawer first. Without cutting my transfer at all yet, I'm going to rub this over the surface of the front of my drawer and then around the edges to get my placement. After I do a single pass over the entire surface of the transfer, I'm going to find a loose edge on that clear backing sheet and I'm going to start pulling away the clear backing sheet while I rub on the transfer. This first drawer has quite a bit of small pieces on it, so I'm paying attention to those as I pull that backing sheet away to make sure none of those pull away with my clear backing sheet. I take my time on this process working up the top of the drawer really slowly and pulling away that backing sheet at the same time. Once I get up to the top edge of that, edge of that drawer and the transfer is attached everywhere else, I'm going to go ahead and take out my sharp razor knife and I'm just going to add a slice right at the top of this drawer where I want the transfer to end. The rest of this piece is going to go up to the next drawer and we're going to repeat this process again. Don't get me wrong, cutting my transfers always does make me a little bit nervous, but worst case scenario, if I get my uh, cut in the wrong place, I can always seam it back together and make the cut again. With all these tiny drawers and the sides of this piece, I would say this transfer application probably took me a good two hours, which is pretty normal for a large transfer like this, especially when you're going over multiple surfaces. So really give yourself enough time. I think transfer application is an art in itself. With my first drawer done, I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process up onto the next drawer and I'll continue this all the way up the front of this piece until I'm out of transfer. So I re repeat the process of centering that transfer on the drawer, rubbing it in place, and then I'm going to go over it with the transfer tool and pull away that clear backing sheet. Let's go ahead and turn on some music and I'll show you how we get this second drawer done.
right, well, that's two drawers down. I did decide I wanted to add a little something different to the top of this piece, so I'm gonna create some resin molds. I did decide I wanna add some color to my molds to pull out some of the colors that are in the transfer. So I'm gonna use some mica powders. These are from the Finnebear line, also from Redesign with Prima, and I'm just gonna dust them into the dry silicone mold before my resin goes in. With the mica powders in my clean mold, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my resin. This is amazing casting resin from Alumalite. I'm gonna mix equal parts of A and B and stir it for about 30 seconds and then go ahead and pour that into my mold that's been covered in the mica powder. I'm gonna let this resin sit for about 10 minutes to cure and once that back has turned completely white, I know that it's ready to remove from my mold. When I pull this out of my mold, it's going to remove with the colors already sealed into the resin. This is a great way to color your molds without having to use paint. But that was just the first step on these molds. I do wanna add another layer of color. I wanna antique these a little bit. They've already got that really pretty mica powder color in it, but I'm gonna dry brush a little bit of a creamy white paint over the top. So I just took an artist brush, a little bit of Wiesel paint and ivory, and I'm just lightly brushing the edges of the mold. All right, back to applying this transfer, and now I'm gonna take the other pieces of this and I'm gonna apply it wrapping around the edges of the jewelry armoire. So I told you we were gonna talk a little bit about applying transfers over dark colors. Some transfers are a little bit more translucent than others. Uh, usually if they have lighter colors in them, you can get an undertone casting from the darker color paints. So in this one, you do see the black paint casting through those lighter color flowers just a little bit. The other thing that can happen on darker colors is the halo, which is the clear edge around the edge of the transfer, can show a little bit more on dark colors. So I do spend extra time when I'm working on dark colors, making sure I go over the entirety of the transfer, first with my finger, um, next with a, a polishing pad from Redesign with Prima, or a soft cloth will also work, and burnishing down all of those edges. You wanna make sure you do this thoroughly, um, and that's gonna help those be even more invisible over the dark color. I use my finger first because that will feel any edges that aren't perfectly seated before I go over it with the cloth. If you do the cloth or the polishing pad first, you might have a tendency to tear your transfer. So definitely make sure you allow this time for extra burnishing when you're applying a transfer over dark colors. It will help with the end result. This one came out beautifully. When I sealed this in my clear coat, you didn't notice that halo at all around the edges. The next thing I wanna do is add a little bit of some gold around the edges and trim of this piece. I'm using some Redesign with Prima Decor Wax. This color is called Eternal, which is a rich antique gold and a light artist brush. I went ahead and also taped off the feet and added a little bit of gold around the feet as well. I sprayed the body of this piece using two coats of Wiesel Matte Varnish in my paint sprayer and this piece is complete. What do you guys think? It is time to stage this one. I used a little bit of jewelry, of course, because it's a jewelry on moi, and then some soft flowers. I have to show you the top of this piece again because these molds are probably my favorite part on this one. I attached these using a little bit of tight bond quick and thick adhesive and they were the perfect accent to this transfer. This was a really fun piece. I love how it turned out. Don't ever be afraid to put your soft color transfers over dark colors as well. It really makes an impact. You guys can find links for everything I use in the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube, and on my website at brushbybrandy.com. And don't forget to click that subscribe button for weekly painting tutorials here at Brush by Brandy on YouTube.